Welcome to the engineer design process. The design process is meant to be purposeful, systematic, and creative. The engineer design process commonly has six steps, but you may even see slides that have eight or nine steps, and that's okay. They're just expanding on the ideas below. Step one is problem definition. Step two is idea generation. Step three is solution creation. Step four is testing and analysis. Step five is final solution or output. And step six is design improvement. Stage one is define the problem. The design process is about creating solutions to problems and challenges. Problems can arise or be created in any situation. For example, an emergency bridge after a massive storm. As human needs and wants evolve, so does technology's need to evolve in order to meet this demand. Things to think about. What problem did the telephone solve? Answer, communication. What problem did the car solve? Answer, transportation. What problem did the watch solve? Answer, time management. What problem would you like to solve? Answer, that's up to you. You gotta think about that one. The engineering design process starts when you ask the following questions about problems that you observe. One, what is the problem or need? Number two, who has the problem or need? And number three, why is it important to solve? If you can't answer one of those three questions, then it may not be a problem that's worth working on. Stage two is idea generation. In this stage, you will find and use information. Before you start, you need to know the problem or need that you want to solve. You will then investigate and find the facts. Sometimes, you may find that a solution already exists for your problem. And in those cases, you can stop the engineer design process because the solution already exists. Investigating can also prevent you from making the same mistakes made in the past. So, where can you find sources of information for your problem? Well, to start, the local library, the school library, article databases, and reference resources such as encyclopedias, dictionaries, atlases, and almanacs. You can also use the internet, which has vast resources. Just be careful on where you're getting your information from and make sure it's vetted. Stage two, step one, is the design brief. The design brief is a short and clear statement that describes and outlines the need or problem. The design brief shows exactly what the task wants to achieve. For example, Lewis Waterman Patton, patented the first fountain pen in 1884. So, with the water pen, it was a necess necessity, might be the mother of invention, because frustration fuels the fire. Or at least that was the case for Lewis Waterman. Waterman was an insurance broker in New York in 1883, getting ready to sign his hottest contract ever. He bought a new fountain pen in honor of the occasion. Then, with the contract on the table and the pen in the client's hands, the pen refused to write. Worse, it actually leaked onto the precious document. Horrified, Waterman raced back to his office for another contract. But a competing broker closed the deal in the meantime. Determined to never suffer such humili humiliation again, Waterman began to make his own fountain pens in his brother's workshop. So, thinking task, jot down your design brief for the problem you have. Does anyone know what a patent means? Answer, a patent is a form of intellectual property that gives its owner the legal right to exclude others from making, using, or selling an invention for a limited period of years in exchange for publishing and enabling public disclosure of the invention. Stage two, step two, design specifications. So exactly how to create the product? 
best way to create design specifications is to ask and answer a series of questions. Look at the five W's and an H. You're going to incorporate a range of questions using the five W's and H in order to cover all angles. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. So thinking question, what questions would Lewis Waterman have asked in his design specifications of the founder? So the who is the customer. The what is the need for the new design. The where would be the entire world. The when, in his eyes, would be that the pen would last at least five years. The why was to prevent leaking. And the how was the new design using a capillarity method or principle. Stage two, part three. Design Constraints Limit of your designs Opposite to design specifications, as they say everything the product must not be, included in the constraints are the size, cost, availability of materials, time, and environmental impact of solutions. Now the technologist knows what the product must do and what it mustn't do. He can move on to the next steps in stage thinking test. Now think of the constraints that Lewis Waterman may have. So some constraints were cost, of course. Some other constraints were more materials and time. Stage two, steps four, five, and six. So step four is initial idea sketches. So you're gonna have various solutions suggested recording using rough sketches. They show the general idea. Number five is choosing the best design. So you're selecting the best design from the initial ideas. You're taking careful consideration. Product chosen must meet the requirements of the design brief, design specifications, and constraints. Number six is selecting materials. The last step of the design stage is to select the materials that you want to use. So thinking task would be to sketch out some ideas you think Lewis Waterman would have had when developing the fountain pen. Stage three, solution creation. You will make drawings, sketches, and technical drawings that show the product specifications. You will develop a plan to make the product, which includes time, tools, equipment, and materials list. Use the correct tools and materials to make the product. Making the product may involve measuring, marking, cutting, shaping, forming, joining, and finishing different materials with accuracy. Remember, safety comes first. So when you're choosing the best solution, you need to look at whether each possible solution meets your design requirements. Does it meet the specifications and constraints? If not, do you have to think about how you can change those specifications to meet the design requirements? Reject solutions that do not meet the requirements. Then develop the solution. Development involves the refinement and improvement of the solution that you choose. Stage four is testing and analysis. In this stage, you're gonna build your initial prototype. You're gonna evaluate the design stages and quality of the product. So when we do this, we use evaluation criteria at this stage, a set of questions about how well the design process was carried out and how well the product meets the design specifications. At this stage, recommendations can be made for improvements. With all these stages, you can always go back and you can improve or change steps from the previous stages. The evaluation criteria or questions are listed. Does the product meet the design brief in terms of purpose, shape, size, materials? Does it solve the problem it was designed for? What are the strengths of the product? What are the weaknesses? Is it easy to make? Is it safe to use? And how can it be improved? So when you're building a prototype, a prototype is an operating version of the solution. It should be using similar materials that are in your design brief. Test and redesign. The design process involves multiple iterations and redesigns of your final solution. Stage five is the final solution or output. This is where you're communicating your final product to an audience. There are different ways to communicate. 
how you communicate depends on your audience or your target mar market. For example, if you're if you're marketing towards to toddlers or to an astronaut. Part of the communication stage is to present all notes and lists made during the whole design process. And this is done in your engineering design notebook. Therefore, throughout your design process, you need to keep your documents neat and tidy for presentation. Part of that final solution or output is to complete your project development as your final solution, then communicate your results. You can do this one of three ways. Final report, a presentation, or a display board. Step six is design improvement. After you have tested your design, you will use your findings to complete any design improvements of your solution. In this step, you're also fixing any problems that occurred. And there are further polishing aspects of design that were even more that were even more successful than you originally thought. Now, as we talk about the engineer design process, and we just outlined six steps, you will see several other presentations of the design process with either less steps or more steps. Just understand that all of these, whether they're five to nine to 10 to 12 steps, they all include the same requirements. Ask, that's dividing your problem. Imagine, plan, create, and improve are all the same process that we just outlined. Here's another example. Ask, imagine, plan, create, experiment, and prove. Here's another example. Ask, identify the need and constraints. Research the problem. Imagine, develop possible solutions. Plan, select a promising solution. Create, build a prototype. Test and evaluate prototype and improve, redesign as needed. It just keeps getting more and more. Here's another one. Define, identify, brainstorm, select, prototype, test, iterate, and communicate and then finally we have this one that has everything probably every word in the dictionary but it's okay because the more detailed you have it maybe that's what you need in this one we have research specifications ideas development choice of ideas plan evaluate prototype proposals for change make Evaluate analysis, proposals for change, make, test, evaluate, proposals for change. So it's telling you that you can always add additional steps into your design process. You can't take away, but you can add. As long as they include those main five or six steps, then you'll be okay. So now, remember, what is technology? So technology is the use of knowledge, skills, values, and resources to meet needs and wants. Taking social and environmental factors into account to develop practical solutions to problems. Solutions take the form of the product. And almost everything we use from a pencil to computer is a product of technology. Here are the references that we use for this presentation. If you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you guys have a great day.